Yo, 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 my Star Citizens and Noob Gamers. Welcome back to another episode of Star Citizen with me, Menings. And in today's episode, I'm going to be doing an extensive guide for beginners. So this is going to be a long guide. I've come on a few times and helped people and seen the issues they have when they first start and how they struggle. So I thought I'd do this guide just to help people that are new to the game. There is now guides coming uh, along, but this game is... Uh, such um, a hard game to learn not in that it's hard it's just that there's not a lot of stuff out there um, in material for, for people to to get from the, the developers themselves in how to do stuff in the game they are starting to add stuff but um, not, not, not a lot at the moment so I thought I'd do this guide and and hopefully then people can use this and, and come back to it when they need to so we're in 318 it's just dropped and what you've got to remember is this game is an alpha game so there is bugs and there is wipes that happen where you do lose your cred and you, your your money that you've earned in the game and stuff like that but that's just part of what the game is so what i'm going to do is this guide is going to be um split up into parts and what i'm going to do is i'm going to have the the first video basically going through the game and about the game and just getting you started in the game and then videos from that is going to be about first missions and then where do you go after your first mission and upgrading your stuff and doing different things like like uh, salvage and mining, uh, cave mining, bunker missions, fighting and stuff like that. So they will be split up into many videos and each of the videos will also have uh, chapters in it that you can skip to. So what you do is you come over to RSI here um, um, Robert Space Industries and then you come to the to the page and so we're in 318 now and what you have to do is you have to create an account now you to play the game you need to buy a ship and the game you have to have both but every so often probably about four times a year that I know of they do what they call a free fly event so you don't need the game you can actually just have an account and they will let you play the game for free basically they'll let you have access to some ships and play the game for free to try it so what you need to do is create a free account and then decide whether you want the game or the way you want whether you want to play um wait for a free fly event when they come up so to do that you just go to account here once you get to account here you come down here to enlist and basically then what you've got to do is um, give yourself a call sign, mine is Menix underline and in BT. And then you email your password, your date of birth. And then this is where you'll add that referral code here. So mine's just dropping down now, and that's where you'll add that. And you'll get 5,000 credits for when the game starts, uh, and it'll push me up in them rankings. And then obviously click these um, if you want to stay informed and to, uh, to, uh, to agree to the terms and that. And then you click enlist. And then you'll get an email from there. So once you've got an account and you've logged in, you'll come up here back to account and you'll have this. You may not have this subscribers tab at the moment. That is a separate thing where you can pay uh, either £10 a month or £20 a month, depending on what's, what level you want. And you get access to ships that you can fly once a month. They'll give you a new ship and some like either armor or some sort of stuff like a gun or something, some what they call the flare. And also you get access to what they call a PTU, which is the testing universe. So when they bring out a new patch, like say when 319 comes out, they'll put it out for testing first to people that are members and have got spent a certain amount of money in the game. And um, they get to test it first before it goes to Wave 2 for everybody else to test. And then obviously before it goes live for, for the whole people, for everybody in who has the game. So what you've got is you've got your settings and you've got your hangar. Up here, you've got your store credits. Um, the the 5,000 credits I was on about that you'll get when, they get when the game does come out, when you do use that referral code. And this is my rental credits. And you get rental credits by having the subscription. Every every month I get 20,000 rental credits. And what they can be used for is to, be, to play in Arena Commander and Star Marine, which is two separate parts of the game. And I will show you them as well in this guide. And, and you can also earn rental credits in those games as well. And then obviously you've got your, your profile. So in Hangar, we go to my Hangar. This is where your stuff will go. So anything you buy in the store in this game here, in, in, not in the game, in this page here, will come here. Any Anything that they give you, like these flirt, this is the flirt from my subscription package. 
Um, this was from my subscription package. This was a referral. Somebody somebody used my referral code and I got this. And um, so this is this is where all your stuff will come that you could buy and get given in the game by CIG. And this this is where your ship will be as well. When you buy a ship, this is where it'll end up in here. So have a look in your hangar at stuff you've got. And this will all be available to you in the game, basically, to, to look at in the game and get in the game and using the game. So that, so you have different packages, and we'll go through that now. So as I said, you once you create this account, which is free, you can then either wait for a free fly event, and once you uh, once the free fly event comes, you'll be allowed to click the play now button and download the game and stuff like that. Or you can then go and buy a, a ship. Uh, and so we'll jump into that now and show you that. Um, so we've got to pledge store. So you've got to pledge, go to the pledge store here to buy your ship. Now they have starter packs. So don't worry about these big expensive ships for now. You don't really need to, to focus on that until you've started playing the game and got used to it. So what you've got to do is concentrate on these starter packs. There's obviously more starter packs uh, in game that you can get, but they obviously rise in value of how much they are. So, I started off with this Aurora, and this means that you get the game with it, this pack thing. It just means that you get the game with it. So you need to decide how much you want to spend. Now, I my advice to you is don't go mad and start spending hundreds of pounds or hundreds of dollars on ships because you've got to get used to the ships first. That's the first thing you need to do is get used to the ships. and. Some of these starter ships um, are not going to be any use to you uh, for doing box missions. So my recommendations are pick either the Aurora or the Mustang. If you want to go a little bit further, then get the Pisces or the Cutter. And if you want to go a little bit further than that, then the, um, the Avenger Titan. So that's my recommendations. Either one of these four here or this one here, because then you can do box missions and you can do other little bits and bats like bunker missions and stuff like that with that. Now... The reason I'm saying don't worry too much about these bigger ships is because the value of this here is the ship and the game. $15 or so of this will be on the game itself. So the rest of the money is worth in, in the ship. And you can actually then use that money from that ship by trading up the ship to a different ship and using what the value of that ship is. So that's why I'm saying don't worry about the bigger ships because you've got value in this ship that you can then trade up to a bigger ship with. So for instance, I'll show you. It, so if you bought like the, this Mustang Alpha here, um, then you you I played the game for a bit and you think, right, the, I'm not using the Mustang Alpha now. I've bought other ships in game. I would rather upgrade this to something like a Prospect or something that I want to use more or, you know, a big massive ship like the Carrick or, you know, something like that. So what you'll do is you take the value of the ship, which will be this minus around $15, and you can then trade that onto another ship. So what you've got to do to do that is you've got to come over to um, ship upgrades here, and you click that, and then you will choose the ship here that you've got, that you've bought, and then it will give you the options of other ships that you can trade up to. So you see this Pisces here is worth $65. My, my red Pisces here is worth $65. Um, but if I was, if I went back to the pledge store and to the ships, you'll see buying the. Um, let me go back to ships and the pledge store, sorry, and back to game packages. Um, and then what I need to do is find the the actual Pisces itself. I think it's around the same price as that seventy two with the pack with the game pack. And so if I go back to ship upgrades. You see that's 72. If I click that there, it's 65. So basically, um, th that the rest of the money was basically on the game itself. So I've got $65, uh, $65 in this ship here, and I can use that $65 to upgrade to a to a more more expensive ship. It doesn't let you downgrade. You have to actually melt the ship, which is a different thing, um, which I'll sh show you in a minute. You have to actually melt the ship, what they call melting it, uh, to get this into store credits. And then if you wanted to get a, a ship that was less value and have some store credits left over. So to upgrade your ship, you choose the ship you want uh, from the list. 
that have ships you've got and then you decide which ship you want so if i wanted to change this to the nomad i would click the nomad and i would have to pay 18 dollars to upgrade, upgrade that to that so basically using that 65 dollars knocking it off the 80 there and then having to pay that so that's what you can do so that's why i'm saying to you don't worry too much about what ship you buy at the beginning buy a ship and get used to flying that ship is what i'm what i'm suggesting now for me um if you have the, if you have the options if you can only afford one of these two i'd go for the mustang because you can do box missions with this and also fighting with this um this one has a bed so to bed log off but um that i thought was a great thing um at one point but i actually don't bed log on these ships that much i always go to a space station so it's not an issue for bed logging for me uh, which is what this has where it has a bed on it so you can log off while you're in space but I always just go end up going to a space station so I, I it's not a, a value to me that and this, this this is only my opinion so I would go for the Mustang Alpha if you can stretch I would go to um, one of these two either the Pisces or the Cutter um, in my opinion a lot of people love the Cutter but it's a big a bigger ship than the Pisces and for a new person playing I think the Pisces has more of a maneuverability and, and space in the back so I would go for the Pisces over the Cutter probably so out of those that's why i would go for one of these or maybe go for avenger titan which does have space in the back and is a, a fighter as well a bit of a fighter as well so it's up to you but if you can only afford the basic one i would go for this mustang alpha here so say you buy the mustang alpha you'll you'll come into a thing what you'll look at and it'll say so you've got a self -land landing hanger which is just like a hanger that you that are not in game at the moment they're being worked on you've got starting money of a thousand credits plus you'll have your five thousand if you use that that what's it called I, I give you that code i give you you've got three months insurance and then you've got the the game download basically now the insurance a lot of people seem to worry about the insurance insurance isn't going to come into the game until it's fully released so literally this three months is doesn't start ticking until the game is actually released and we don't know when that's going to be so it's indefinite at the moment this insurance so don't worry too much about that you'll start understanding more about insurance as you start playing in as you start playing the game and you see people talking about it and stuff so don't worry too much about that and when your insurance runs out it's believed that you will basically pay um to either renew insurance with in-game credits not actual real money but in-game credits or you'll have to pay a fee to get your ship out basically so that's not an issue don't worry too much about that you'll see people talking about that but it's not an actual big issue don't worry about it so you'll get your you'll get your thing and you'll get your game package so the next thing to do is you've got your account you've got your game package hit the play now button and then this will basically show you that you've got your account show you that you've got a game package it says i've got two because i've got the, the game package and and squadron 42 uh which is the single player game that you can buy some of those packs has squadron 42 in it included in it um but they're a bit more expensive i've got two flyable ships and um then basically it tells you basically that your computer can handle the game and then you can download it and you'll get this as well with the free fly where you can download it so you don't have to have a ship it'll just say it's free fly and, and you can download that installer so that's that so remember the game is an alpha game it does have bugs and you're going to see some of these bugs when i'm playing the game later but you get used to them and and you still got to just look past that and enjoy the game for what it is so that being said let's go back into the account i'm going to go quickly over the subscribers section with you now this you don't have to worry about too much um play the game a little bit first and then decide whether you want to go for something like the subscriber section so the subscriber section what happens with subscriber section is you can pay in the store if i can find the store that is uh, where are we let me find the store so we go back to pledge store here uh subscriptions here so you can either play $12 for the Centurion or $24 uh, for the Imperator. And what you get is you get a jump point, which is a magazine each month, not sent to your door, but um, 
sent uh, it's like um, I'll show you in a second in, in the subscriber section um, you get the first wave of PTU access so once they bring out a new patch that they're testing it goes into what called um, persistent testing universe and you get access to that with both of these you get a vehicle each month this month they give us the uh, freelancer max which is a, a big cargo ship or well um, a medium cargo ship should I say and you, you get you both get that on both 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 of those versions you get a flare so that could be armor a gun a statue like this um, I'll show you some of them when we're in game and uh, you get one of them with a with the twelve dollar package, and you get two of those with the twenty four dollar package each month. And it's generally the first Tuesday of every month. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you get um, rental credits, which can be used. As I was saying, you get I get twenty thousand each month, but with this package, you get forty thousand, and they can be used to hire equipment in in Arena Commander and in in star marine and you can also earn them rental credits and that so arena commander you can take out ships rent ships and try them out in space and stuff like that to see how you like them so then you've got the imperator chest fly um we don't have this with this this package here uh but you do have this with the with this one here and the imperator level subscription um coming across that is um when when there's a new flyable ship comes out um uh, um they uh, every quarter they um you get to fly that basically then you got the subscribers then and early access tickets and imperator events um obviously you don't get that with this one then you got the vault which is all these like concept arts and stuff then you get discounts on your merch and annual passes and stuff like that discounted and then you get coupons of a certain amount once you've accumulated 10 months of subscription time you get uh, coupons that you can use so you just click the subscribe button and then you can either have it one month only or you can have it reoccurring monthly, which is what I've got. So let's go back to the account and go to the subscription section. And in the subscription section here, this is the Jump Point magazine thing I was talking about. And you click that and it's just a magazine that you can read and go through. And it has some good stuff in it about what's happening in the, in the, in the universe and then behind the scenes stuff and about ships that they've got coming out and then they'll have a story every so often they'll have a story as well um if i get to that so this is just still again the behind the scenes of this ship and then the trading cards thing uh relationship edition so you got they got the race these race things um coming into 318 and then they'll have this like this story about certain things like in the universe itself um that you can um, that you can read up so that's the the jump point magazine and uh, get rid of that then you've got the vault which has all these um uh, uh, sandbox white box things like work in progress of certain things that are coming along uh, that you can look at the pictures and stuff like that and then you've got access to some wallpapers for like your desktop and stuff uh, and then you've got videos you can look at as well and watch and then you've got like a den where you can go and chat to people and then you've got the subscriber store and in the subscriber store you can have access to some of the stuff like these so these are the flares that we've had recently um i started my uh, subscription here and i got this flare here and then the next one i got this one one of these ones and then the next one i got this so basically these are the flares that i've been getting over time these are w what i've been getting like the paints and stuff and then we got these suits not long back and then this is what we got this month um this tracer for one of the guns so that's what you're getting with the flares and and but you can also have access to go and buy more because with my package i only get one but i've got access to come and buy more if i want to buy more in here so that's the uh, the subscription store the subscriber store you only get access to that with, with the subscription and so that's it for this for this section so I'll take a, th a, th a think about that. It's, um, I do it for, for two reasons, for backing and for, um, well, for three reasons. For backing, for access to the PTU, because I love going on to see what new stuff has been done when they, when they release stuff, as well as the ship of the month. And the ship of the month, they gave us the um, Freelancer Max. Now I'll show you that in the, what's it called? So if I go to just um, ships, and just we just do them all. Um, where is it? Gee. So um, 
the ship of the month was a um a freelancer max i don't think it's on here and they there it is here so it was three so it's it was 180 um dollars but when you go to uh, if you've got subscribers that gets that, that gets um dropped down in, in price i think i paid 150 pounds i think it was for it oh go back so i paid 150 pounds for it but i upgraded it from a different ship i upgraded it so i ended up upgrading my hull air and something else i, I melted my hull um, melted my hull air and then upgraded my uh, del my delta and that gave me enough to get it, which has left me two dollars. So, you, so that's basically when you, with the subscribers pack, whatever the subscriber ship is, you get um, a discount on that ship when it comes out. So, let me talk about melting as well. This I know this section has been a long section, um, but I have put in timestamps and stuff like that for you to um, jump through, uh, so you don't have to go through all this. But let me go through. Uh, my hanger again and show you what I talk when I'm talking about melting and upgrading. So once you upgrade um, You'll have your ship here your original ship. It'll still show your original ship here But you'll have a button here that says um, Apply upgrade and you have to do that before you can see it in the game So just remember that but what you can also do is you can also then melt the ship So if I had say I went to my other ship my Mustang you can actually what they call melt it which is basically break it down for um, for store credits so i could take this ship here and break it down for store credits exchange here so if i click exchange it's going to tell me i can melt this ship down and it's going to give me 75 dollars in store credits so this is what i was talking about earlier if you wanted to to go for a, a less expensive ship then that's what you would have to do you'd have to hit that exchange there put it into store credits and then use that store credits um, here if, to buy the, the smaller ship. Now they do things called uh, a standard package and a war bond package in the in the store. Um, the war bond, um, the war bond is it's not going to show it here, but the, the war bond basically means you you got to pay cash for it. You get lifetime insurance, but you have to pay cash. You can't use store credits whereas with the standard one you can apply your store credits and it's generally like sometimes i think the um the the one i just did uh if i can see it again this one here this had a war bond and a normal and the normal was 150 uh, 53 no the war bond was 153 uh, but the um the the irregular one was a, a 160 something so yeah so um if you've got if you're paying out cash you can get the war bond and get lifetime insurance if you're not paying out cash then you're going to pay a little bit more with using your store credits so that all being said and done that is that section of it um so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the game So once you've downloaded the game, you're going to end up with this RSI launcher here. And you click the launcher and that will put you into this. This will load up and then you'll have a thing on here that says live. Now this is where you select your PTU when you're doing the PTU stuff, but you won't have this option here at the moment. And what you'll do is just install the game. Once that game's installed, um, you can go through settings and you don't need to worry too much about that. But just know about this in the settings, this verify Sometimes when you get errors, you can hit this verify and it'll re-download everything for you um, quite quick as well as I show you here. It just quickly, it quickly downloads it. And then verifies the files basically. And then does the anti-cheat and then you'll get your launch game. So remember that verify button there. So if we click uh, launch game now, you'll get this and then go into there. And 
and then you'll get this as you come in and then basically you're in then basically you're in the game now you won't have the screen i just had what you'll have is a button the same screen but with just a button that says um um create character character customization so this is what you'll come to once you've clicked that button this character customization here you select your gender and then you go through your different things like blending the hers and stuff like that and so basically you just go through this whenever you want you can always go back to this at any point by going into it um and you'll see at the bottom corner it's got character customization and then once you've done that just hit accept and you what you're going to do is be presented with this so what you have here is you're going to pick your system. So we only have Stanton at the moment, more being introduced soon, like Pyro and that. But you, we only have Stanton at the moment. And in Stanton, there's four planets. You've got um, Microtech, which is new, uh, which is the new Babbage one. You've got um, Area 18, which is Art Corp. You've got Lawville here, which is Hurston. And then you've got Orison, which is Crusader. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick your starting location. Now, so there's pluses for each one of these and there's, and there's negatives for each one of these. So uh, New Babbage, Microtech, um, is quite um, a snowy place and quite windy a lot of the time there. Area 18 is quite a dusty, um, a dusty type place. It's like uh, industrial, so... Uh, not um, Lawville, uh, Lawville, which is Hurston, again, is, is dusty and quite rusty and can be quite windy and Orison is a lot of uh, where the unsavories live so I'm going to pick um, or Orison which is Crusader now back before two, uh, two, um, 318 uh, this wasn't a, a good choice for a new player because the atmosphere uh, was quite large to get out of it used to take uh, it was 70,000 kilometres to get out of so you'd start at 80 because it's up in the city in the sky You'd start at 80,000 kilometers and then you'd have to get to 150 before you get out and you could quantum out. Whereas the others, you'd start at uh, zero and you'd get out by 11. So, um, but in 318, Orison's not got that anymore. Now it, now you start at 18, you get out at 90. So it's now on par with all the others that get now. Now, the things to look at here is when you choose your area, it depends on what you're doing, really. You'll learn more about what you're doing um, as you go along. But any of them will do for now. Each of these planets has a space station orbiting in it, and that's what makes it um, whether you would want to go to that planet or not. So, my new Babbage, which is Microtech, has Port Tressler. Area 18 has Virginia Point. Lawville has Everest Harbour, and, Ho and Orison has Port Olisar. Now, the the first three, uh, New Babbage, Area 18, and Lawville, those, their, their space stations have a med med uh, med center in there where you can um, have your respawn point go to it. Whereas Port Olisar in Orison doesn't have that. But Port Port Olisar in Orison, you can buy guns from, and and you can't buy guns from the other three. So basically, it depends on what missions you're doing. If you want to go out and do um, missions of of fighting first person shooting and stuff like that then orison's a good place to start and then go to um port olisar and you can get weapons and stuff like that from there whereas on the planets of the other three you can get weapons but not in orison and i don't think you can do in lawville neither so it depends really what you want in gameplay wise i'm going to choose orison because i like port olisar and it's a good place to go and get my guns and stuff when i want to do stuff plus the space station at the Port Olisar space station in Orison has landing pads outside so they're easier to land on whereas the other three they have landing pads but for some reason they've stopped using them and now you're, you're always going inside uh, through doors and sometimes there's a bug that happens where you uh, can't you can't get to it fast enough and then the door's shut or it gives you a trespassing warning and then you can't get back out and then it ends in impounding your vehicle so Orison is where I'm gonna go and in this video, you'll probably see that I select um, Area 18, but I was doing something when I did this video. I was I was trying something different, but I do. My base is going to be um, in Orison, and it's up to you where you want to go, uh, really. Um, 
So yeah, uh, the 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 other thing with your starting position is all the stuff that you buy in gear in gear um, in uh, the shop that I showed you earlier um, will all be put in the place that you choose to start off with. So in Orison, it will end up in 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 Crusader basically. Uh, well, Crusader is the planet, but it'll start in Orison, the, the the city of Orison, and. All your stuff that you buy from, from the in-game will start there. All your ships will start there. And that's your base. And anytime there's a wipe, that's where it'll put all your stuff. Um, a lot of people will then go to a space station. So if they go to any of the space stations where they've got the med bays, and they'll take all the stuff up to the space station in the in the, um, the space, in the spaceship that they've got. And they'll move it all up to the space station uh, manually. And then they'll set their imprint for respawning at that space station and basically live out of the space station because it's easy to get out of the space station and get your ship and stuff without messing around because you literally get up, go downstairs in the lift and then go and get your ship and then you can go. Whereas when you're on a planet, you've got to go through the transit system like the trains and stuff like that to get to the port, the spaceport, and then to get out of the atmosphere. But my mindset used to be to go and do the space station thing and go and make an imprint at the space station but I decided um, I'm not going to do that no more. I want to, when I die, I don't mind about going on the transit system. I want to be able to have all my stuff available to me uh, without having to move it every time there's a wipe. So that's why I'm staying at Orison and I'm not too bothered about them being no um, respawn place at the space station. So I'm going to choose that and hopefully... Um, you guys will choose whatever you want. You'll try a few different places and you can always set your... Um, you can always set your, your spawn point. When you Say if you're working around the Hurston area, you can always jump to Everest Harbour and set your spawn point there if you want and then reset your imprint after you've finished in that area. So there's always that option anyway. But for me, my, uh, my thing is to now... Um, be at Orison and stay at Orison and not worry about moving my imprint unless I'm working in that area. So, once you've created your character and you've, cho um, you've chosen your place to go, it will probably automatically send you there to the, the place you've chose. But, once you come back out of the game and you um, are back in here, you have these 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 three these three things. So you got the Pist persistence universe, which is the place where you go and you just you can just live a life in in the universe. Then you got Star Marine, which is a first person shooter, uh, multiplayer shooter, a bit like COD and stuff like that, where you do cap the flag or cap points or de team deathmatch stuff like that. Then you've got Arena Commander which is uh, basically all about fa uh, using your ship. So you've got racing, you've got um, dogfighting, you've got a pirate thing called Pirate Swarm where you have waves of pirates coming at you. Uh, you've got Vandal Swarm where you've got uh, waves of alien ships coming at you. And then you've got Free Fly where you can just fly around. But then you've got multiplayer where you can do one-on-one -on -one multiplayer, uh, dogfighting and stuff like that. So there's a lot in that. And you can also rent ships in there with your rental credits and upgrade those ships um, with new power units and stuff like that. Don't worry about that too much at the moment. I'm just letting you know it's there uh, and it's for you to explore once you start understanding more about the um, the game itself. I will do a medium um, guide at some point going through um, ship components and stuff like that and and these things as well. But for because this is just a beginner's guide, I just want to get you going and learn about the, the game itself. Now, um, my opinion is, once you, when you get time, go into your options and go through each of these options and take your time to go through. It can be overwhelming, but make sure you go through ta you through and and anything you do understand, obviously um, change. But if you don't understand what it is, over time you'll you'll learn it and you'll um, you'll start changing these more over time. I'm still changing them. I've been playing nearly a year and I'm still changing stuff as I, as I go along. So don't worry too much about that. Uh, go through your graphics and get what's right there. Um, I've set my quality to very high and then these medium, which means it leans more on the graphics card by having this as very high. Set your field of view, your motion blur, I've turned mine off. 
V-Sync, it's always recommended to turn that off. But I mean, it's up to you whether you have that on. Then set your sharpening and you earn your chromatic um, a variation and your film game, I've turned mine off. And this um, uh, session information QR code, just put some QR code at the top there. Uh, and then go through your audio, whatever you want with the audio. And and then you've got this last one here, this at the end here, this comms and stuff like that for like, you, if you've got a Torby eye tracker or an, a head tracker or anything like that, this is where you can um, sort of do all with all that lot. And, and I always have my microphone muted because when I'm on game, I'm always in Discord and I don't like having dual going through. Uh, and then you've got your controls and your key bindings, which we'll go through. So with the controls, you've got your inversion settings and your mouse curves and stuff like that. Um, but you also have the gamepad down here with the same. So with the gamepad, because I play with the gamepad, it's, you know, if you're doing first person um, on foot or whatever, then you can edit your curves and, and change them to what you want, basically. So I'll go through them uh, in your time once you get used to stuff and uh, to make it um, right for you. And then you've also got the sticks and stuff like that where you can do there as well so then we go to key bindings and my advice is have a quick look at this and just have a look at a, a read of each of the things and and, un, and not have to understand it but just know that that they're there so knowing that um activating a check uh, a chat box i'm um, toggling the chat window um you know moby glass and star map and stuff up here just know that it's there, as well as these down here, the modifiers. So like the golden modifier here, which is Alt. Um, so if you press Alt uh, and then G, it will do this one, basically. Or if you uh, Alt and T will do this. So have a look at the, the modifiers as well for, the, for that. And just keep coming back into this and looking. Say, so if you want to know, oh, what was my landing gear again? Then you come back in here and you look and you go, right, where was landing gear? There it is, it's on N. So you know then, and and um, you can start uh, learning the, the controls yourself. Um, it takes a little bit of time because there is so much to it. It is it's such an in-depth game that it's not, it's, it's, it's a learning curve. It's a steep learning curve. And as you get more and more into it, more and more people will help. But it is a hard game to start off with. It's not an easy an easy game because there's so much to it and it becomes overwhelming your brain becomes clouded and you just find yourself in a tiz because it's just so much to do so don't don't try and take it all in in one go take your time with it and keep coming back to this and it's the same with um the game pads like so you've got your modifier here that you press and then if you're pressing that modifier it's going to do this 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 or this uh, my biggest um, tip will be to make sure you remove self-destruct because the amount of times I've blown my ship up by pressing it by accident and I'm going to show you how to do that now so in the key bindings you go to whichever one it is your keyboard or your mouse or whatever and then you've got your flight here and then you've got your on foot there so um, switching between the two so you can see same with the with the, the keyboard and mouse you've got your on foot and you've got your flight so each one will tell you which, which is which on foot and, and um, in flight. Um, so say you wanted to change your self-destruct from from um, flight mode here. You come over to this to advanced custom uh, controls and you click that. And this is where you can set all your controls and stuff like that. So what you need to do is, is go through each of these and look. And over time, you'll start setting these as you want them. I have a video out um, that uh, shows that. Uh, shows this uh, my settings I go through it so you can have a look at my my controller settings and so you go through and you are so it, it's probably set on here on this self destruct here and all you do is just um, right click it to unbind it basically as you see mine's unbound there because I don't want to hit the self destruct by accident on my gamepad so I'll go through each of those and um, these key bindings and advanced control and go through and look like you've got your own foot stuff down here uh, doing stuff on foot go through and look at stuff that you that you it might not already be on the uh, controls thing um the key bindings thing here so you might have to go into the advanced controls and look or set it yourself um so you know basically 
Uh, but take your time to do that. Don't worry too much about it. What we're going to start off with is going to be enough. And then you'll start building and developing your own controls and how you fly and stuff like that yourself. All that lot will come to you in time. And I know this is a long video, guys. Um, but I wanted to, I did want it to be extensive. I, I wanted it to be some something people can come back to and say, right, I'll go back to that video and watch now. Now that I understand a little bit more, I'll go back and watch some more of that video now and maybe I'll understand it a bit more because it is going to be overwhelming. When you first start this game, if you're on your own and you've not got someone to help you, it's overwhelming. I did a Discord call with someone once and I was on the Discord call with him for two hours going through everything with him and doing his first mission with him over Discord. So um, it is is it is overwhelming. So once you once you um, go into the game, So when you spawn, this is how you'll spawn in the bed like this, inside a habitation. And we'll just clear that chat with F12 there. And so you'll get up and you'll see here I've got loads of stuff on my back, but that's not how you start. So I'll just skip to where it looks like when you start. So when you start, you'll just have some basics on, some black stuff. And this is your habitation where you start. So you can have a look around. You got things in here like for seats to sit down, shower and bathroom area and like cabinets and stuff. No use for these at the moment because hygiene and stuff and, and and cooking and stuff has not come into it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and press F on the door. This is, once you come out of here, this is green circle in this area. So each area has its own abs. And so this one is obviously um, Orison's one, Crusader. And so basically, this is the habitation area, and the habitation area will always have the hospital nearby as well. Um, you've got to look at the transport and stuff like that, we'll go into in a minute. But first, if we're going to press I and we're going to our inventory, you're not going to have any of this unless you've bought stuff. So you're probably going to have nothing on your filters under here. So I'm going to um, just take off the armor one. So this is your inventory and this is basically where you'll have all your stuff that you've bought in game, you've got in game or whatever it is you've bought from the, the, the website. This is where it'll all be like your paints for your ships and your masks, your helmets and all that stuff. It's all going to be in here to put this stuff on whenever you want. And so you can filter this stuff up here by going into your armor or your undersuits. Uh, it's substance. So if I wanted to change my undersuit, I could take this undersuit off and just double click this one and put this one on instead. Or what you can do is just take this one off, if it lets me. You can also drop it there as well if you need to drop it. So let's take this one off and put on this one. You can drag it as well and drop it onto the circle there and that will put that on there as well for you. Um, and you can also drag it off your body here and drop it onto the floor and it will come into a box like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my one back on that I had. Wasn't that one. Wasn't that one. I can't remember which one it was. But it's fine. And what you can do is with this on, you can then pick it up. If you haven't got a suit on, you can equip it. As obviously I can't because I've got one on. Or you can grab it like this. So when people drop suits or you do some stuff like looting and that, this is what you can do. So let's stand up and if I press I on this, when it highlights like this, I can drag it back over into my thing and it will go back into my suits under here. So when you start, you're going to have, obviously you're going to have your grey helmet on like this and you're going to have maybe this on your side here, which is a med pen, which we'll discuss later on. This is a tractor beam we'll discuss later on. And you're going to have probably a pistol. Uh, so if I go to weapons, you won't have all these weapons and stuff unless you've had your account for a while and you've had some of these been given to you. So I would throw that gun on the side. So that's how you'll come equipped. 
um, when you start the game. Once you die, you'll lose all this and you'll just get a basic plain white suit and helmet. So, you can sort obviously your stuff out like that. If you also, if you're selecting you was going to move it, you can move everything. So we'll talk about that later on as well. So up here in this top here, let me just get rid of this filter. So up here in this top is this little icon and you click that and it shows you all the attachment points you've got on your suit. So where you can add ammo and med pens and stuff like that there. Uh, some of this stuff I won't go th um, sort of go through too much. These are basically guns for your shape, just plushy toys, um, gimbals for your shape, more guns for your shape. This one just goes on the front of your shape. And uh, again, more plushy toys and, and tops and paints and stuff like that. So basically, just stuff that you've got in your that you bought that you've got in game or you've bought um, on the website itself. So. Let's go out of that and let's press F1. So F1 is your Moby Glass. And this is important. This this is where you do a lot of stuff as well. So this is how much money you've got. I've got 210,000. If you find it difficult to read how much you've got, if you click the more trader there, it shows it better with the comma there. So 210,000. And while I'm here on this more trader, this is where you can send people money. So you click somebody's name and you can send them money basically. So if I was sending him some money, you put it in and say if I was sending him a thousand, it would then still take five, five uh, to 1,005 from me and give him a thousand. So that's how you give money. I uh, was just showing you that there. So if we go back to, um, to F1, pressing F1. Um, so on, on this is obviously your name, your money, your current vitals external pressures and stuff and then your missions you've got going on so here is your vehicle loadout and wherever your base is or wherever your vehicle is you'll get a list of your vehicles here this anvil is locked here because it's up in another space station uh, i'd have to call it over so say if i wanted to do something with this anvil arrow here i would uh, select it and then you would get the stuff come up here and then you've got your flare here, which I'll show you on another one in a minute. Then you've got systems, which is your coolers and your power plant, because you need uh, bigger power plants for more um, uh, power hungry equipment once you start changing them out. And then you get your quantum drive and your shield generators. Now you'll see if I go to one of these like this, it's a size one and a grade three. Grade three or C here, which is the lowest grade. And you have size one, two, three, depending on the size of the ship you've got. So if you, I'll show you um, Urkel in a minute. And what you'll do with Urkel is you will um, go and buy your equipment. It tells you where to buy it from and stuff like that. I'll show you that later on in the video. Um, but basically what it is, is um, you will look for different types. You've got uh, military, you've got um, stealth, you've got uh, racing and industrial. So you've got an... an um, uh, civilian so you've got all different tack all different classes and they all have different uses basically so that's your systems then you've got paints if you want to add paints and you've got vehicle weapons which we'll discuss again in some other point of changing your vehicle weapons but as a as a as a, a new player you don't want to really worry about this at the moment you'll you'll learn all this as you go along all you've got to know is that your ship is good as it is uh, as it as you get as you take it out so like with my freelancer max here I've got these flares and I've just added this like flag thing on and that goes on the front of the thing here when I'm flying it. So I just thought I'd show you what a flare is basically. So I'm going to close that and go back in actually. So next you've got your knickknacks and this basically will let you pick whichever system we're in and then different categories and you'll show you the different two, uh, the different places you've got stuff. So you won't have this, it, um, you won't have two if you're new to it and you've only just pulled in. You'll only have one and then you click whichever one and then that will show all the different areas in that area for you. It's like Port Olesar, so I've got nothing in Port Olesar. So if I go back and I go to Crusader again and I go to Orison and then you can see all the stuff that I've got here at um, this at this place, this space station or, or planet side thing. So that's where you've got that. That's what that is about. Just so you can see that. So if I went to Hurston, you'd see like at Everest Arbor, I've got some equipment there as well. Like my Pisces is there, my helmet is there, and this sniper I've got there. And this 
where this stuff is is called the local and that was the inventory that i pressed a minute ago that show local and every place or should i say 90 percent of places that have a local so when you're looting boxes and stuff you'll generally drop it into the local and then drop it onto your ship and then come back to a space station and then drop it in your local again at the space station to keep it so that's knickknacks then you've got your star map where you will navigate and set courses you can't set courses until you're in your ship any uh, um, but you can have a look around the map then we've got actually i'll go back to that and i will show you more of this but if you want to find out where you're at then you just click this and this will show you basically where you're at and then you can like see i can't set the route but you can go in and see the different places that you need to go and then you can switch the routes as well on that so once you've got a route up so that's that so the more trader i've just shown you is how to send money then you got your contracts manager and you've got different ratings and um so different missions like box missions search missions for searching derelicts and stuff mercenary missions if you want to go to fight people if you're fighting people always pick up the call to arms because you'll get extra credits from that and you got bounty hunting missions where you've got to go track a um, permit uh, track it tracking people then maintenance like fixing stuff or, or getting rid of waste and stuff then investigation where you could be like looking at wreck wreck wreckages or going down into caves and stuff like that research again um, uh, just deploying a, pro a probe then we've got these ones new in 318 which is racing going on to the racing and then you've got delivery so delivering stuff and that's all in the general tab and then what you'll do is you'll pick on one read it and then you'll accept the offer or whatever some of them are timed like this one so you only have so, so long to do it now these are the normal contracts then if you go into your personal here then you've got um, these ones are called a bit more unsavory so you might get some that um, may give you a crime stat um, a crime stat basically means you are going to be like uh, wanted by the police and bounty hunters will come after you and bounty hunters can be players um, that will be coming after you because they've been given the contract to come and get you so while you're starting while you're starting out i would stick to the general tab until you get used to, to things but this is um it can, you know it can pay more money on these ones then once you've accepted the job it'll come up here and this is jobs that you finished as you see here some jobs that i did earlier and the thing is is normally these will all disappear but because of persistence they're all um still showing from when i last did them um, a few hours back and then you've got beacons so people can put out beacons and you can actually create a beacon yourself so you can say i want um, a medical assistance because you've been um, put on the floor or whatever and you, you're incapacitated and then you'll set your destination and then um, whoever you want to come and get your rep level and then you'll set your payment amount so i'll say like fifteen thousand or something like that and then you'll broadcast that beacon people will then come here and these beacons will come here and they can pick up those beacons and then come and get you but be aware with beacons because some people will set medical beacons and um, they'll just um, basically jump you. So be aware of that. I'd stick at, um, stay away from beacons until you've been playing for a little bit and you know more about the game. And this is your your rating basically, where, where it was saying in that beacon a minute about, about ratings. Okay. So that's your contracts manager. Vehicle maintenance. Until you, you in, when you sat in your vehicle, this will come up, and you'll basically be able to refuel your hydrogen, real fuel, your um, your quantum, and um, uh, repair any damages and restock your armaments, basically. Right, so then we go on to a journal. So this one again is, is can be important. So basically this is going through all the, the stuff that when you first start. But the biggest one to um, to think of, uh, to remember, is one called commodities price alert, this. Now it won't always be at the top every time it comes up. It'll come up at the top here, like in a blue thing. 
saying commodities list update. And basically, you just have to go and find it. It'll probably be down in the list here somewhere. And once you find it, you'll find these basically like an overstock uh, and understock of stuff. So if someone's got an overstock, then you're going to get it cheaper, which means you'll be able to to um, to, uh, to to get more of it and and be able to um, tr um, trade it basically for a higher price. So like medical stock here. So all these places have got um, overstock of medical. So you could go down to these places and grab this medical in a big ship and then you can go to the places where they're understocked and sell them at a higher price. So that's something to keep in mind when you when you um, are further in and you start doing the trading. But I'm just letting you know that at the moment, uh, just so that you can you remember so you remember when you see the price thing come up here, you'll see it come up here now and then. And uh, you'll hear like a little buzz and it'll come up here at the top, pri uh, commodity price alert thing. So that's that, and uh, you probably, and then you've got this Delph, Delphi here, and this will give you your reputation with certain things. So like Hurston Security, you see it started going green because something I did early, earlier. I did a haul in earlier on, so again, um, it gave me a little bit of green. I missed this one, but luckily it hasn't given me any negative. And then what you can do is also add these to your favourites by clicking on them, and they'll, they'll, they'll then jump up to the top as your favourites there. And then you've got contacts. You'll get time to time, contacts will come up here from your contacts manager here. You'll get something like in personal, it'll come up and it'll say, meet me somewhere or um, whatever. You might, it might even be in general sometimes, but generally I think they've been in personal. And it'll say, meet me at such and such a place or come and see me or something like that. And then you accept it. And you'll go and see some special character in the back alleys or in an office or somewhere and he'll give you missions and then he and then basically once you've done that their their contacts will then come up here basically in this and you'll be able to do more jobs for them so that's the run of this and then you've got the suit um oxygen tank oxygen eva fuel and power so when you're flying around eva out of your ship you've got all your, your credentials here and then this middle button takes you straight back to this your Moby Glass thing. Now, at time to time, you might hear me say stuff and stuff happens. Uh, what it is, is I've got a thing called voice attack. And what it does is it presses keys for me on my keyboard because I use a pad. Sometimes I don't want to take my hand off the key, off the pad. And so uh, I want keystrokes that I can't assign to my pad to be pressed. And um, so basically you'll hear me say something like landing gear and stuff like that. And they'll do stuff for me. Like if I said torch, um, give it a, a pause and then say torch and you see my torch turned on so that's the thing called voice attack to look at as you go further in as well um, to help you with your key stuff torch torch there we go right so this is green circle and this is the Habs area of um, Orison in the Crusader area it's a city in the clouds now the reason I said I like to come here is because I just love this city and I love the space station Port Olasar which is up up there basically somewhere in the sky and we'll head there in a minute. The the bad side to this is like I said in my other part earlier when we was looking at picking a base is there is no medical center at um, Port Olasar. So a lot of people in the beginner guides might say to you um, set your uh, respawn location at the um, space station up in the off the planet and that way then you don't have to go through all the transit um, transit systems of stuff uh, to get to your ships and stuff but for me I've done that and it was a it was um, a pain for me because then I'd want to get stuff and I'd find if I hadn't spent an hour going through my inventory dragging all that onto my ship I know we've got the move all now which makes life easier but basically you have to move it all onto your ship then get up to the space station and then move it all off your ship having the move all button now will help that but for me i'd rather just come back to the planet where all my stuff is and put on a new suit or whatever and put on a new gun because everything's stored here and every time there's a wipe all your stuff gets put back to the planet where you start where you where you choose as your home base and then you've got to do it all again like i said it is easier now with the move all button but um uh, my 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 thing is i'm not too bothered i will make my bit my regen points um at the space stations when I'm doing missions, but I'm not bothered if I end up coming back to base here. So I'm not going to be worried about choosing a different planet because Port Olasar doesn't have a medical center. 
if it, you know, I'll just come back to this base because I'm not. It doesn't take that too too long to get out because the new atmosphere. Um, it starts here. We're up flo we're floating above the sky um, at 80 kilometers, 80,000 kilometers, and the atmosphere and exit in the atmosphere is 90,000 kilometers, which is only 10,000 kilometers. So it's so it's gone down from what was 80 to 150. So you'd have to you'd have to go out by 70 kilometers or something like that to um, just going out 10 kilometers. So it's so much easier now. So that's why I've put a base here rather than at the other places like Microtech and, and Lawville and, and other places. Right, so. Let's get down. So as I said, every place has a... Um, every place has a... a um, when you come out your habs, you'll have a medical centre as well. And... This is the medical center is where you will um, spawn when you die. So if you set your regen point to be on the space station, which we'll show you later on in the video, then that's where you'll spawn. If not, you'll spawn at the medical center, like uh, this one over here. I think this one's the medical center over here. Let's get over to it. And you may have to visit medical centers at time when you've got certain injuries because um, level three injuries and stuff can only be done in med beds at hospitals and stuff. So this is the um, medical center here at, at, at Orison. So if you do die and you haven't, and this is where your imprint is, this is where you'll end up. It's not that far from the Habs. You just got to basically cross that bridge and you're back to where you was at the Habs. Now medical centers are good because you can come in and you can go to, um, to a room so you can pick a room patient check in and go and fix yourself in a room which I'll um, I'll do so we're going to floor 5 room 1 so you've got to keep that in mind floor 5 room 1 um, before we go up there so what you'll also look at at space stations, when you want to transfer your imprint, so you want to spawn on a space station or a different place, you'll find the insurance place like this, the kiosk. And all you do is you go to this insurance kiosk, regen. You can also do this in the bed, which I'll show you in a minute. And because this is my primary location, you'll have the other one here. So say if I was at a space station, it would be here and it would say underneath transfer imprint. And that's what I would do. So I will show you that in a bit. So room five, um, it's floor five, room one. Let's get over there. And this is a, a long video because I want it to be in depth. I want it to be like, we had a person on our live stream earlier on and he was struggling. Um, so I want to make sure I go through everything like, and, and people know everything about it. One big thing you have to do in this game is you have to look at signs. So like, I want to know where room one is. I've got to look at the signs for where room one is. And so here we are in the medical center. These are just what gowns that people, when they've, when they've died and come back here, you get like a medical gown. If I pick one up, I'll show you it. It lets me pick it up. Grab. Grab. If I press I, I'll show you what it looks like. So that, you see that, what I've got there, that's basically a medical gown. And you'll start with that. And generally what people do is just drop it like that on the floor from the body. So this is your medical bed. You can have someone come in here and, and um, use the digital assistant to help um, uh, your medications and stuff. Or if they've brought you in, like carried you in because you're incapacitated, they can do all that here. So when you're in the bed, your food and health will also um, go up as well. So that's, um, people jump on med beds for that. And let me look, get back on that. Lie down. So you got this thing that comes up above you. And so like I say, you can also do your regen here, but then you can also do your medical care here. And it'll tell you like here when you've got some fractures and stuff. 
uh, let no injuries detected. And then what you do is just go to your treatment and click bang, bang. I'll show you that later on um, in another thing because I've, I've got a video on that and I'll add that in in a minute. And then you've got medication where you can add different medications to your system, basically. But be careful that you don't um, add too much. You've got to add some researcher to make sure that that gets added. But I'm not going to administrate them. And you can also auto med as well. So I'm going to come out of that, back out of there. And to do that, I just press F and then looked up. So I'm going to come out of this one now. And that screen you was looking at there, you can also look at uh, at the bo bottom end of the bed there. So another thing they'll have here as well at medical centers is a pharmacy where you can buy stuff. Down to the ground floor. So there's the insurance depot thing there. Let's have a look where the pharmacy is. There's the pharmacy. So you go to the pharmacy and you can go to the kiosk here, and in the pharmacy you can buy um, buy stuff here. Let me know if so things like happen. these med pens. So if I wanted to buy a med pen, I'd just grab that. Quick buy that if it lets me. Uh, so let's just choose yours. Let's try that again. Maybe something wrong with that one. So let's just um, not let me buy. Not too sure why it won't let me buy. But basically, you'll buy the med pens and these med guns, but you don't actually need them because you're going to pick these up on your first mission that I'm going to suggest to you anyway so but just so you know that's where you can go and this is where you would go and sell hey, uh, those day, things right? as well so that med gun Welcome. that white med gun that i just showed you them um hey, where is it here they're worth 700 so if you pick these up and sell them at the med center they're worth 700 um so i say you have 10 that's seven grand basically so i'm going to leave this medical center now so that's the medical center you get one of these on um each planet that you spawn on uh, and three of the space stations um, that are up in the sky on each planet, apart from Port Olisar, but there is one at Grim Hex, which is a lawless place. Grim Hex being like, it's like a space station in the asteroids and um, a lot of unsavories go there. So like I said earlier, one thing to do is always be looking at signs because this is where you'll get your maps from. It's like for your trains and stuff. So you'll wanna make sure you always keep an eye on the signs at time, uh, after a while you'll get used to stuff. And I'll show you this map down here. So again, that's the, the habitation area. And that um, showdown, uh, showroom and transit is over there. And then these are like the, where the space the, the shuttles come in for you to get. And so basically what you do is you'll say, right, if I need to get to a certain place, you can have a look on there and it'll tell you where to go basically. So say if you wanted to go to, to somewhere so like the trade and development division here, you'd go to Cloudview Center. So you'd you'd get onto the um, uh, the platform that says Cloudview Center. So you would have to go to um, where are we? So there's the Cloudview Center here, and we are where are we? Where at this? Uh, where at? Um, not the where at this? This thing here. Uh, no, we're here. We are at Cloudview Center already. So we're already at Cloudview Center. So the trade and development, you'll just have to find it around around here. Um, if you wanted to go to um, the Discovery Center, then that was over here somewhere in the Providence, this one here. You'd have to get this this train here, a set train. It's like a floating thing. So you'd, you'd look for these, these things here. So that the sky transit. And so basically, get used to looking around the planet you're on and finding out where things are so looking at the different space stations so the, um, uh, uh, ports so this one's going to go to august on low spaceport uh, which is where i need to go to get my ship so to get your ship you have to go to the spaceport and you have to call your ship out so that's what i'm going to do and what i'm also going to do is now I'm going to keep my stuff like it is, like that. I'm not going to, because you have the same stuff, so I'll keep the stuff that, that I've got. 
and there should be a time up there. It's saying zero, so it should be coming at any time soon. I think there's a little bug at the moment where it shows zero and you just have to wait. I'll probably push this forward for when that train comes, that flight thing comes, or I'll go through around a different way. Maybe go around this way. So the shuttle's coming for this one. So let's jump on this shuttle on ground. There we go. And then we can sit down on the seat. Please clear the hatch. Shuttle will be departing. Cool. And you see there the shuttle departure and it's got a timer. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to probably forward this on as I get to the spaceport. Because I'm going to have to go around, basically. But what you see me doing here is troubleshoot, troubleshooting. The other, the other um, shuttle didn't come, so I'm going to have to basically go to a different place and see if I can get the shuttle from that one. To the spaceport. Okay, let's get up then. There we are. And let's see if we can get the spaceport to the um, to the next place from there. So we'll go across and see if we can get a shuttle to the spaceport around here somewhere. There's a um, shuttle over here. So where I've come here is where you can buy stuff. If you want to buy new suits and stuff like that, all um, places have these like for, for starting out. But for, for now, I wouldn't worry too much about um, coming and buying gear because you're going to pick gear up in the first mission that, I, that I'd send you on. And these are where you will drop off boxes, not these specifically ones, but these are the places like you're going to be looking for for dropping off the, the boxes in your first mission. So I'm gonna go over to, to um, here. I think there's a thing around here for the port, space port over there, you see? Oh, and it's just leaving. See, so find another one to the space port. Um, see there's one coming in now, so this is going to take me over to the spaceport instead. So that was a little bit of troubleshooting that I had to do there, because the other one wasn't coming in. Please Let's sit down again and wait. So 50, 51 minute, uh, seconds to get to go.
approaching. So this is the section. If this is your stop, please prepare to disembark. It is my stop. So this is the section basically is just going to be about getting around the, uh, and getting off the planet basically so and then we'll pick up a job from there so what we're looking for now is the lifts over here the elevators remember always be looking for the signs always be looking for the signs that's what we gotta do there we go in the left and then we're gonna go to spaceport and what we're doing at the spaceport is getting out our um, ship to fly. Now, depending on the ship you've got, if you picked up the Aurora, then you can do the box missions. If you've picked up uh, a Mustang, I think I was told earlier, you can still do the box missions. So um, you should be able to do the missions I'm, I'm going to give you. So this little kiosk thing here is you'll find around in spaceports and in the airports like this. And what it is is a little find thing. So if we log in, and what it'll do is it'll tell you if you've got any fines that you've got to pay. And if you do, pay them because you'll end up with a, uh, with a low level crime start. And so when you try going to places, they'll just blast you out of the sky or the security will try and kill you and stuff like that. So what we've got here is um, this traveler thing is this is where you can rent ships. So you can come and you can rent ships with, say, you, so I've got like these two, 200,000 credits here. You can actually rent ships. So if you want to try certain ships, you can come and rent them here and try them out for a bit. So if you haven't got a ship that can do cargo running, you can get something like the Titan here, which will uh, allow you to do that. Or this one here, this Mustang, start a light freight one here. So yeah, and if you want to do the racing, you can just rent a racer here as well, this Mustang uh, rate gamma racer here. So these are here for if you want to rent these things out um you can rent them out for one day um one day two days three days i think it is and remember um buying uh, drinks and and stuff so one big thing in in star citizen is the maps you know reading signs and making sure you're always hydrated so you always have to make sure you've got food and water with you so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quit by this can, of coat, can here and I've got my helmet on so if I take that off and then um, come off that and press my trigger basically I will drink and what you got to do is keep an eye on your hydration um, and if you see it here so basically here so this is your medication, if you've got certain medications in your system. This is your hydration, this is your, your fuel, your, your food. This is whether you've got any injuries and what level they are. This is the temperature, so it could be too hot, too hot, too cold. And then this is your health. And so you always got to make sure you've got a drink with you um, or pick up a drink. So you don't have to buy a drink here because, again, the first mission we do, you're going to pick some of this stuff up anyway. So I just thought I'd show you that. Make sure you um, keep an eye on your food and water. And then if you need to, buy food and drink at these places here. And then what we're looking for is the hangars, which is where we're going to buy, uh, which we're going to get our ship out. And you'll have places like this, like this burger joint here, where you can go and get food as well. You can go and buy burgers from these burger joints for, for, for eating and stuff as well. Always keep an eye on the nutrients as well. So. Say if I was to, to um, more info on one of these burgers, it tells me like the effects. So it's dehydrating and hypermetabolic. So basically I'll be a little bit faster, but I'll be dehydrated. And then it's got the, the NDR rating here. So what you've got to do is always remember to keep an eye on stuff like that. So you might end up eating something that dehydrates you quicker. So always keep an eye on that so this again is energizing and hypermetabolic and then you'll get things like um, uh, energy drinks like this energy drink here this energy drink will also um, do your food as it'll, it'll do your food so um, energy drinks will do your food water will do better hydration for your food will obviously do better for nutrition but you can get energy drinks which will do both uh, more um, 
more on your hydration than it is on your food um, nutrition. But um, just keep in mind, like if you've got energy drinks around and no food, energy drink will still do your food for you. Right, so this is the, the uh, hangar section of this area. All space stations have this hangar section. You just have to find it in the space station you're at. Follow the signs and the, the, the subways and stuff to get to it. And then what you'll get is you've got these little terminals here, these fleet manager terminals. And this is where you'll get access to all your, to or the, the majority of your um, vehicles. Um, so you'll see three of my vehicles here. And uh, I do have a, another ground vehicle, which I can get at ground bases as well, which I'll talk to you about once I get to a ground base. So what you've got is if it's got retrieve, it means it's here at the place you are. If you've got claim, this means you've got to um, claim it and wait a certain amount. Now, each ship has its own amount of time that you have to wait. So having a starter ship, what you can get quick is as a, as a bonus. So I'm going to claim this Pisces here. And what it's going to say is it's going to, it's going to take 43 seconds for it to come. Once I hit the file of the claim, it'll give me the option to pay a certain amount of money and get it in a certain amount of time. Now, the bigger the ship, the longer this time is gonna be. So you'll get some at 40 minutes or something. And then what you can do is you can pay something like 5,000 credits and it'll knock it down to two minutes or five minutes or something like that. Did you enjoy the standing so the bigger the ship, then the more, the more you're gonna get that. So always have something that you can get to quick, basically, if you need to. So I'm gonna file a claim on this because this is my daily driver which I um, want to get out all the time. And there we are. So basically, it didn't show you the, the ex expedited. I'm not too sure. Oh, so it's doing the, the Freelancer Max for some reason. I'm not sure why it's doing that. So that one. So as you see, the expedited time will be instant if I pay this much money, but sometimes it will say, two minutes so knock it down from 10 minutes to two minutes or something and if you pay the expedited fee then obviously you'll get it instant so i'm going to jump back into that now and that now should be available in a second five four three and now i can get that out and what it'll do is it'll give you a um your vehicle has been delivered to the following location it's going to give me, to um, if I just wear a, um, a black bar, which will tell me where my ship is, a hangar five. If you don't get that black bar, all you have to do is look here at the, uh, where your ship is and it tells you what hangar it's on. So we're at hangar five. So you come over to the lift section here and we're going to go to hangar five. Thank you. And please visit again. Someone coming in with me. He's going to anger eight. I'm going to anger five. See you later, my friend. So he's off gone on his journeys, doing what he wants to do. So that what we did then to each other is an emo, and you can set them in uh, your key bindings. So I'm going to go through key bindings in a second with you and you can also do them here you can set your emotes around here on these things by by going to these and actions and stuff like that and setting them on here right but i wouldn't worry about this this stuff too much at this moment in time so like you've got an action here i can click it and um uh, mouse button two and then i can set rebinding it and then do something else or whatever it is i want to do um but i'm not going to do anything so going to come out of that now before i get in my ship a couple of things i'm going to note in here is over there is a hospital area so you get these on planets uh, you don't get them at space stations and what it is what you do is if you bring somebody in that's injured okay it's all wrecked if you bring someone in that's injured then what you have to do is bring them and put them on the bed uh into the into here and then you just send them up, place the patient in the, in the elevator and then you press that. And then what that'll do is it'll send them to the hospital and then you can go and meet them over there. So that's what that does, uh, just so you know that. Right, my, it looks like my ship's either been battered or someone's been using it for salvage. 
What did I do with my ship last? I can't remember what I did with it last. Anyway, I'll fix it in a minute. So, key bindings. Let's go through that with you. So, pressing escape, you can go to your options here. And you can set different uh, stuff on your... Go through these and have a look. Um, uh, the different things you want to do. And I have got a video of setups and stuff, which I'll put in the thing coming up now. And um, that video is there basically for that. And then I've got, you, you get your graphics, do set these as you want them. Um, depending on your graphics card, I've got mine set to very high and the medium, medium, medium. And I've got a, uh, a 2030 or something like that. 1030, I can't remember what it was. It's a, <laughs> uh, it's a, I don't know. I don't know what my graphics card is. It's 1030, I think, something like that. Um, it's not nothing massively major anyway. And so go through these. But what you've also got is you've got your controls for setting your inversions and your mouse sensitivities and stuff like that. And if you come down at the bottom here, you can also do the same with your gamepad. So if you're a gamepad player like me, you can set your dead zones and your curves and your sensitivities and stuff like that. And also, if you've got whole tosses and joysticks and stuff like that, you can do that there. Then you've got your key bindings. Now, I would go through these key bindings and learn them when you've got time. Um, just have, an, have a quick nosy through these and see what stuff you can do. And then, basically, remember that you can do them things, and if you need to then look, you can always come back in here and look. Now, you've got this modifier key here, so something like this... Um, this, this alt key just underneath my cursor. If it's got M1 on something like this here, that means you have to be pressing that modifier key. And so you've got all your different modifier things here at the side. So um, have a good look at that. And then you've got your mouse stuff here as well to look at. And the same with the gamepad. You can click across and look at the gamepad. You've got your modifier key here. And then like the modifier for, you know, you'd have to press for the space break. You have to press your modifier and press in that for your space break. So you've got your, your um, go through your controls and have a look. And then you've got all your VoIP stuff and, and head tracking stuff and that if you've got like a Toby Eye Tracker like I've got. So we'll go back to key bindings and what you can do then is say you wanted to do something on your gamepad or your keyboard or whatever, you can go to advanced customization and then you can go through each of those and you can reset them to what you want. Or if there's something that's not showing on on the, um, the the controls thing here, then um, you can maybe have it might not be set, and you'd have to go into here and set it. So going through each one of these in your time and learn them and set them up to what you want is that's what everyone basically does. Get used to things first, and then start looking them up, and then start putting them to where you want them. Don't try worrying about this too soon. So that's that. Um, just keep in mind that you can do all this stuff. Um, changing your keys and stuff like that to what you want, but just have, make sure you have a look first at what stuff you can do. So that's that. So I'll go back into the game. Right, so here we are. It's got my ship. This, so this is a hangar where it will put your ship, and then we're going to have to go out that door there. And this is damage, basically. Someone's damaged my ship. Um, I don't think I've got a thing for... Um, let me have a look. Uh, weapon or utility, utility. Let's take that on my side hip here. I don't think I've got um, the things to put in it. Ammo. No, I don't have a thing to put in it. So basically, it might already be in actually. So look, so press. No. So what you can do with these is, um, if you keep hold of F and you go to. Inspect. I think someone else said there was another key that you can press on it. And you can um, then customize this. And inside it, here, you can add different attachments to it. So you can add a tractor beam, you can add a miner, mining beam, you can add a um, salvage to salvage and repair your ship, and then you can add a medical one as well. And you can also put a battery in the bottom here, down in it, or you can put in your uh, canister for, for salvaging. So that's called a multi-tool. You'll pick one of those up. Don't worry too much about it. You'll pick one of those up and um, you'll see me using that at some point anyway. So let's exit that. Keep hold of R to put that 
but it looks like my ships took some damage basically so what i'm going to do is i'm going to repair that anyway so getting in the ship just find the door you'll see it as like a circle here to get in and then always lock your doors afterwards um stop people getting in and hijacking you when you come out of the armistice zone now this ship don't worry about the ship if this is my my um pisces recovery one which has the medical bed in it and all that stuff and and um, food and water and stuff for if i ever need it i've got it all stocked in this one and i can use them whenever i want basically so and it always restocks so this is my pisces r and then also it has the storage and uh, storage lockers here for the crew and storage lockers for um the, the um, patient as well so you could put stuff in them and they can uh, access them so getting into your ship you just go to your seat and you press um f and then enter pilot seat and there we are we're in our ship first time so in your ship let's go through this you're gonna have like these mfds will turn on in a minute and you can interact with these i'll show you in a second so from here you've got VTOL, this ship doesn't have it, some of the big ships do where it'll spin the engines round and you'll get a better vertical and takeoff and landing. Coupled mode means if you're going in one direction and you let go of your sticks it'll carry on going in that direction. When it's turned on like it is there, then it won't do that, it'll, the, the um, stabilizers will stabilize you when you let go of your stick and it'll stop you. ESP, I can't remember too much what that's about, I don't really use it, maybe people in chat can talk about that. And then you've got your landing gear. And then up here is you've got your booster, which will come up, and your thrusters, your velocity, how fast you're going. This little chevron here is um, your current speed, uh, where you're going. This is um, uh, a uh, cap. So where this is, that's the cap, and you can go past that, and you can take that up to as far as you want, uh, further down. When you've got sticks, you can have this turns into um, like uh, dotted lines and you can actually go beyond it because you've got more control with the sticks. Uh, then here you've got your heat, um, how much heat you're giving off, uh, how big your cross section is and how much uh, electric you're giving off. Then you've got your G-safe and, and your um, compass things here. This G-safe is about more like your G-forces and whether you'll black out if you're doing too many maneuvers. Then you've got your altimeters, how high you're up, and that will turn into something different when you're in space. Then you've got your weapons, which will then turn into missiles um, when you switch between the two. Then you've got your hydrogen fuel, your quantum fuel, and then this is your weapon type. So if you've got gimbaled weapons, um, you can go from locked, where you've got to turn your ship to them, to a gimbaled where it will automatically log on when you're in a certain way. Then you've got your decoys and your noise, and then you've got your stagger and your guns. So your guns will both, if you're both fight, firing your two guns at the front, it'll alternate them, staggering them. So that's that. Up in the top corner here, this is an armistice zone. It means you're in an armistice zone, it means you can't fire. And you'll also get um, like um, a satellite with um, like a communications icon comes up there as well to let them know you're in that, that, that area for, for communications. So that's that. To turn on your ship is R. And your shields will always be down when you first start up your ship from R, when everything's turned off. So what we tend to do is, when we land, we press I, which turns off our engines only. But it keeps your shields on and all that stuff, and then and that way then basically if you get attacked, your shields are not down and you're vulnerable. So pressing I will just turn your, sh your engines on and off. If you come across security because you've got something illegal in your in your cargo, if you press P, it will turn your, your weapons off because they'll tell you to turn your weapons off and stop moving. So that's what you've got to do or else they'll just blow you out the sky. So that's P and O is your shields, turning your shields off. So I'm pressing O, turn your shields on and off. So going into the MFDs here, you've got all these. So this is like calling um, these guys here. You can set a button to it like I've done. Um, then you've got your shield and uh, so this is your thrusters putting more power to your thrusters putting more power to your weapons and putting more power to your shields and when i say power i mean that they'll take priority in recharging when the power is got enough power to do it it does some of them will give you extra bonuses like your weapons might give you some more extra bonus in your weapons with, with more bullet um more 
laser ammo um, to fire. Um, but they'll they'll have priority and they'll go faster. Basically, they'll recharge faster. So this is your thrusters to recharge your thrusters faster. This is to recharge your weapons faster, and this is your shields, and you'll get little bonuses from that. Uh, this is your um, where you are. This is where your enemy will be, and then this is your shields, and then this is just another just a, a spare one. Then here you've got things like your power heat, your power's low, weapon heat, threat. Um, he shields are down, a proximity warning, so it might in case you smash something. When I'm coming out of here, you might see it comes up proximity warning and then that'll light up. And then when you've got radar locks and missile warnings and stuff like that, that'll come up there. Now, these MFDs you can you can play around with. You can go to the menus and you can choose different things. Like you can go to the weapons and change your weapons. So if I want all my weapons on one thing, then I can do that. I can put them both onto one or separate them to two different triggers. Um, and then obviously your missiles and that you can play around with there. So the, both my guns are on the same thing and my missiles all about my missiles. I don't really go too much into that depth into them at the moment. And then you've got your comms and stuff like that. So what you have to do to come out of the um, hangars, you have to call it to the traffic control, uh, traffic control. You have to do that going out and you have to do that coming in. And when you're coming in, it'll give you a, a little um, circle with a chevron to land. And I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so what you have to do is keep hold of F, go down. And uh, you'll see here that you've got Orison Landing Services here. Now you can just click this button here. Or alternate, alternatively, you can press F1, go into your com link down here, and go into Friends here, and you'll see it on here as well, Orison Landing Services. So if you click that, They'll hit, hail them, and then they'll tell you you're clear to launch, and they'll open up the thing, and then you can come out of this, and there we go. So hopefully you can learn your controls. Um, I can't tell you controls at the moment, so hopefully you have a look and learn them. So while that's opening, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to show you this. So this is the maintenance one that we showed you earlier. Um, I'll have to show you that when I land later. That's what I'll have to do because it's not letting me do it so I'll do that in a minute so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward and then I'm going to head up to the space station landing gear so what I'm doing is I've pushed up my um, Thank you. you'll see here I've pushed up this limiter to the top and what I've done is I've pressed C to put cruise control on which means this Chevron will just keep pushing up until it reaches to this um, be careful when you put, put your cruise control on that you don't go smashing into something because it's basically just pushing forward for you. So if you fight that you're going still going forward even though you what's it called? It can be two, one or two things. Either your couple mode is not lit up, which means you're, you're going to go into the direction you was traveling, or you've got your cruise control on here. And you see that like, this is going up now. So once I get to 90,000 here, then I'll be out of the atmosphere and I'll be able to jump quantum places. To take up that um, speed limiter, you just roll your mouse up and down your mouse wheel. Our missile section there on the on the right here has now come up, and then this is how far your target is and and how close you are. Don't worry too much about that now. As you get or as you go over time, you'll figure this stuff out. So I'm going to switch back to my guns there. Right. So, you see it said, while I'm in our armistice zone, I can't fire your weapons, and that's that thing at the top corner there, means I can't fire my guns while I'm in, in the armistice zone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off my thing and let my speed down, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press B to bring up this mode here. And this will bring up the thing for me to, um, to go to, to the port Olasar here. Now normally it does have like a ring around it, but for some reason it's not got that ring around it. Um, let me see if I can um, maybe turn off my engines. All Pressing U turns off your engines, by the way. And you'll see I'll just start falling down to, this, to the ground. I'll press U again. Turn it all back on. All on Hopefully it brings up. No, so that must be bugged out, that um, thing. So basically, 
it's not showing it, but you have like a circle. And when you have that circle, it tells you uh, how ready your thing is. None of them are on. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not showing it, so you'll just have to hear the little tinging going on. And what I'm doing is I'm pointing that, and once my things are charged, I'll keep hold of um, B, and that will quantum me to that location. And as you see, now I'm there. So this is the space station of the area I'm at, called Port Olisar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head into it. All these chevrons are ships. And I'm going to request landing here. Just so that you can see the space station section of it before we pick up the job. So now that we've got the um, armistice zone thing come back up here at the top corner, um, you can now request landing. And you can do that again by pressing F1 and go into your com link here and then to your friends and then Portal Asar Landing Services and click that. And what that'll do is it'll give me that little blue chevron there with a circle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix my ship up here as well. So you see the little green boxes coming from it. So in 3.18, this is new. Uh, it used to be in the older ones, but now it's in um, it's now in 3.18. And what it is, is, is this will give me auto landing, landing gear. So once I come over the boxes here, if I keep hold of N, it will automatically set the landing for me, as you see. So it's just gonna land now for me. So this is Port Olisar, the space station of this area. And in here you can buy weapons and, and armor and stuff like that in the shops. You don't need to buy that stuff at this moment in time, but just remember that this is where you can buy it. This is a beginner's guide, so I don't want to be putting too much stress on you going first person shooting and stuff like that. I just want you to get a hang of making money and stuff like that. So as you see, I'll turn my engines off and I'll go back inside the ship. And what I'll do is F1 and I'll, I'll do my fuel and stuff here with this. So there we go, now I can I can repair and that'll basically do that for me. And then you'll get the thing at the top here that says repair in progress basically. So that's that repaired now and my ship will look like new, which it does. But unfortunately, it's not doing the what's it called. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out of here and show you the space station and I'm going to put the ship away and see if that sorts out the issue I'm having with the um, thing. If not, then um, don't worry too much about it. Don't leave your ramp open because people will go out and steal your ship. I've done it many a time before. And now I'm dying. Oh my God, my helmet. I didn't put a helmet on. I'm going to die. I'm dead. I'm dead. Rookie mistake, guys. Don't come out with your helmet on. Wear your helmet off. When you're on a space station like that, that was a rookie mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back up there in a minute. And um, and um, hopefully go from there. So this is what happens when you die. You go back to the hospital where your imprint is. And this is the gown that you get put on, on you. Like I was saying earlier on. And most people will just grab that gown 
I'm gonna drop it on the floor. And that's it. We'll run around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this in a minute. Um, I've shown you enough of this now um, for the first beginner's guide. Um, all I was gonna do is go to that space station. My next mission will be to actually go on uh, the first mission, which will be the next video. But I thought I'd show you a, another space station here. This isn't Port Olisar, this is a different space station. So this is one with the med center. And I just wanted to go through and show you this med center section, basically, um, to start with. So, yeah, this is a normal space station, uh, not the Port Olisar one. The Port Olisar one looks different to this. So, yeah, so there we go. So over here is the med center, and this is where you can get a room. Um, if you need to be healed, as you see, I've got some damage here, some um, level three damage that needs fixing, which saw. I'll go through that with you as well while I'm here. Um, but basically, this is just showing you how to go to a, a space station medical place. And there's the farms if you want to buy stuff there. And then here's the insurance imprint thing. So if you want to come to a space station, you'll find this insurance uh, terminal thing again. And you'll come to this and then you'll set your imprint to be at this space station. So currently it's on the planet and then I just transfer my imprint, hit confirm, and there we are. My my spawn point now is at this space station. And as you see there, I've got a level 3 injury on my leg and a level 3 injury on my torso. And my hydration's down a little bit and my um, nutrition's down a little bit and I've got 74 health. So what I'll do is I'll go to this bed here, lie in this bed and it will do my hydration, my nutrition, and my health. And then I'll have to administ administ um, administer treatment for my level three torso and leg injury. So what I'll do is I'll press F and keep hold of F and then look up and you'll see there, then I can hit the medical cur and I can then um, look at my treatment plan, click on the torso treatment and the uh, minor leg treatment and I click per, um, treatment there and then that will fix that and my health will start going up. And that's that. And then you just get back out of the bed here and get on about your day. And this will show you like why people come here because they'll come to the hospital here when they die. They'll end up here at this hospital. And then this is how quick it is to go over and get your ship out rather than going through the transit and that's why people do it. The lifts to, the, to my right that I've just passed will take you up to um, the cargo centre or the shopping centre. And then here's your terminals for the space station to get out your spaceships. So that's going to be the end of this guide. Um, we hope you like this guide guys and it helps you out. It tells you a bit more about the game the, in little bits and bobs. Uh, feel free to leave comments uh, in the comment section about this and your little tips for um, starting out, players starting out and things I might have missed and just any questions that we might be able to answer. And yeah, so the next part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back over to Port Olisar for the next part and what I'm going to do is pick up the first job and show you about getting some, how to start earning some money with your small ship on your first job. So hopefully you can um, push on to that one. If that one's not available, it means I haven't created it yet. I'm going, it's going to take a few days to do through, a, get a few through a few of them and then put them up over time. Um, so yeah, just keep posted and uh, hit that bell and subscribe and you should uh, get notified when they're there. So we hope you like that one, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys out in the verse.